Nope. All right, it's early, early, early. The first week of July. Temperatures have been steaming hot here in South Louisiana, and that's good for crabbing. I tell you what, these crabs go crazy in the high water temperatures, provided you get out here first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. First thing in the morning is prime. Now let me tell you, we're here early. It's very early. Sun's not even up yet. We just now put, well, most of our nets out. We got four left to put out, but we're gonna begin our first run. Got a boatload today, bunch of people. Our good friends at McNeil's. We're in my buddy Dan's boat and very, very optimistic. The tide is racing out of here. Falling tide, I know it's gonna change early this morning. It's supposed to be rising most of the day, but hopefully we can catch some crabs before that tide switches. We got a big 4th of July crab oil plan for today. We really got the pressure on. We gotta catch some crabs. We gotta make this happen. All right, first net of the morning. Make sure it's a good one, Connor. Hopefully it is. Nope. It is a skunk. <laughs> Drop it. It's probably the uh, picker upper. Yeah, Maybe definitely. the crabs are sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking they're sleeping. Sleep. Woo! Oh, that's a heavy one. Uh oh. Come on, Connie. We're counting on you. Is it heavy? Yeah, there we go. Oh, yes! It's the I'm keeper. A one. All right. I got one. We're not skunked. Well, you only got one on this run. 120 runs? 121 runs. <laughs> 120 <laughs> runs, we'll be there. At this point, we'll be fine. We'll be done about 8 o'clock. I'm In the evening. Hungry. We get home at top of the fireworks. Mom, pull it up. Fireworks, that's it. All right, Connor, you're on a hot streak. Yeah. Oh, we made the yeah. right there. Oh, they might. Let's get some more water. Oh, that's you eat sweet brother. Oh. oh! Big old Big fat old turkey neck. <laughs> Come on, Connie. I'm gonna have to grab the rope, I don't know. No, you're good. Oh, oh pull it up. Pull it up. Oh. Good one. Yes. Hey, we got two, two. of them. Both keepers? I mean, just double. Double, we'll pull them out. They're made. Don't worry about that. It's gone barefoot. I know. Barefoot. All right. Oh, hey, Connor, that is a, that's a monster. <laughs> hey, this it's rate will be as bad as we're doing. It's going to pick up. Come on, Connor. Our meal today is in your hands. Oh, yeah. Good night, the chicken. Rail dump. Connor, what are you doing? Good thing Connor's long. Dude, you've been inspecting Uh, It's a keeper. That's for times called redemption measures. He's dirty too. Yep. Yeah, I got it. Game master, game master. All right, I want to show you something. When you go crabbing and you get home and you eat the crabs, this is the type of crab you want to eat. My buddy Ash is holding this one. You see this crab? In addition to being a monster, he's also filthy dirty. Hold him up, Ash. Hold him the other way so you can see his belly. See how dirty he is. 
Look how filthy that crab is. Generally, that means he's been in his shell a long time, so he should have a whole lot of meat in there and be really, really full. People tend to shy away from the dirty crabs. They think they're like gross or nasty or whatever. You be the one who grabs them and eats them because they're the best ones. I'm going in the water. No, we're going to eat him. Gotta catch 120. We're at the party. Six divided by 120. All right, yeah. Kyle, you're redeeming yourself. We got like two meat Two meat Oh, there's one loose, Ashley. Come on, plastic. Wow. He's got it. Right at the end of his reach. He's got it. We got this, Connor. He's got an old ball in your hand, buddy. Woo. Oh, nice female. Big, dirty female. Big, dirty, <laughs> amazing. Put, put that on the video. All right, so that's the end of run number one. And I got to tell you, it was definitely a good run. First run of the day, we probably got, what would y'all say, two dozen? 25. Yeah, Joel says 25 because they want to say two dozen, but I think it's about two dozen. All right, so I did a previous video crabbing along this wall, and I generally don't mind giving up spots, particularly for crabbing. What I wasn't expecting, though, is somebody to come out here after we put our line of nets and literally put his line of nets directly next to ours, some of them as close as three or four feet. Absolutely incredible. So it's definitely hurt our haul. Not only that, but it's very confusing trying to figure out what nets are ours and which ones are his. So you come out here to do this, be courteous. There are so many good crabbing areas in South Louisiana, you really don't need to do something like this. All right, it just goes to show you how every day is different out here. Where Joel and I caught the crabs during the last video, has been Skunkville today. Just no crabs at all. One here, one there, nothing to speak of. The hot area has been right along this wall, very close to it, and also in the real shallow water, maybe four or five feet around the bend there, which we generally don't crab a whole lot in that area. So you gotta be mobile. You gotta move a lot and figure out where these crabs are. It's just kinda like the guys in the Bering Sea catching the king crabs. You gotta find out where that biomass is. And today, it's different than it typically is, but we've definitely found them. So Dan, uh, let me know when I, when I can dump this one. How deep are we? Okay, good. Good job, buddy. I want it to be shallow. Yeah. All right, our net hits the bottom, and almost immediately, the chicken draws the attention of some hardhead catfish. And what's interesting to me is how tentative these catfish are. They, they kind of just peck at the bait and don't really attack it, almost like they're unsure exactly what it is. Okay, now this is really interesting to me. Some kind of noise occurs somewhere. I don't know what it is. The catfish don't either, but it definitely spooks them, at least for a minute. But they can't stay away from an easy meal, so they come right back. Finally, one of them gets the courage to go in for a bite, but he swims off almost immediately. That kind of opens the floodgates though, and it's a catfish feeding frenzy. They're doing a number on this piece of chicken. Here in South Louisiana, you don't have to worry about piranha, but apparently you do have to worry about hardhead catfish. I wouldn't want to be standing right here with a cut on my toe. Now I count six catfish in this frame. This is truly a feeding frenzy. A couple of much smaller pinfish also move in to join in on the feast.
This to me is so cool. I could literally just watch this for hours. And finally, a representative of our main target shows up on the scene. He seems to be having a little bit of trouble negotiating this net. But before long, he makes it to the chicken. And when he does, all the fish give him a wide berth. For them, pretty much the feast is over. Notice in the background how well you can hear this passing boat. A pinfish moves in to take a few pecks on the chicken, but he makes sure he stays on the opposite side of the crab. All right, this is cool. A catfish comes in, but the crab quickly displays its dominance. The cat doesn't make the same mistake twice. Our crab's about to get some company. The barbarians are at the gate. Unlike the catfish, this dude is not taking no for an answer. Our original crab looks a little bit intimidated, but he's not giving up his meal. So the newcomer is going to have to make do with the wingtip. Not a whole lot of meat there. But it's apparently enough to keep him satisfied. Just like the original crab, the newcomer apparently doesn't want any catfish around. These guys are tolerating each other, but they're constantly jostling for position. Now look, I put this in here just so you could see what type of impact a passing boat has on the bottom a significant distance away. This net is in four and a half feet of water. The boat that passed was at least maybe a hundred yards away from this net and it still stirred up the bottom. And these guys are about to hear another boat. And it's one they definitely should have paid a lot more attention to. Oh, 
All right, so when we started the day, we had a goal of 120 crabs. We're in the midst of our last run. Now, we haven't counted what we got here so far, but coming into this run, we had 102. So we're hoping to get 18 on this run. We're pulling them up, debating the nets, and we'll be heading home. Hopefully to get a nap, because we've been up a long time. It's still early, but we've been up since three o'clock. We'll get home, get a nap, boil these babies up, and have a really, really good 4th of July. Alright, let's see Marshman Mass on. Alright, so Marshman Mass on here. So we had a goal for the 4th of July crab boil, 120. And boy, did we hit the nail on the head today. We got 120, most of them were those dirty crabs that you have to love. And they were, boy, were they big. <laughs> <laughs> and right there. And look, you gotta get the arm motion. Too. Arm. So, uh, yeah. <laughs>